We are going to start our lesson today, lesson one, three, real numbers on the number line. So if you are taking notes on the video, you're going to want to pause the video right now to get this top part. Okay. And fill that in. And now I'm going to move it up and now pause the video to get the bottom part maybe, but you might be able to get it as I explain these bottom numbers. Okay. So. When we are talking about the real numbers, which is almost all the numbers, eventually you'll learn that there's something called an imaginary number um, as well, but we're gonna wait until you get to that level to talk about that, okay? For now, all of our numbers we talk about are called real numbers. That's the big picture, okay? Within the real numbers, these are called subsets here. And so that's something that maybe we should write down. All these little buckets, are called subsets. So when it asks you what number, uh, what subsets a number falls into, it's these buckets, these different ones. So they go in order from top to bottom, usually in the order you learn them, okay? So the first set of numbers you learn as a child are natural numbers. If you ask a four-year-old to start counting, what number do they start with? One. Four-year-olds do not start with zero unless they're super smart, right? Okay. Uh, or three-year-olds, right? Um, my son started counting at a very young age. Before he was two, he could count to 30. He's got a very mathematical mind, but he didn't start at zero. He started at one. Those are the natural numbers, okay? So they're the counting numbers starting with one. Now, technically, they go all the way up to a infinity, um, but those are the natural numbers. Now, every natural number is also a whole number, which is why they are pictured as buckets here. The whole numbers, the only difference is that when you get a little bit older, maybe six, five, I don't know, you realize, oh, there's a number before one. What is it? Zero. You add zero. So every natural number is a whole number, right? But every whole number is not a natural number. What, not, what whole number is not a natural number? Zero, okay? Now that falls into the next bucket called integers. And integers, you start realizing at a little bit older age that there are numbers before zero that are less than zero. What kinds are those? Negatives. So integers are all your positive and negative whole numbers. So no decimals, no fractions or anything yet, okay? And so all the negative whole numbers, all the positive whole numbers, and zero, okay? But again, every natural number, every whole number is also an integer. Going on down now, in the next category, which is where we start focusing at this level, is the rational and irrational. So notice, rational is in the same line of buckets here. A rational number is any number that can ultimately be written as a fraction, okay? So negative two-thirds, already a fraction. 0 0.3 repeating is a decimal, but can it be written as a fraction? Yes. Does anyone know what fraction it is equivalent to? Go ahead, David. Uh, nope, it's not three-tenths. Three-tenths is 0 0.3, but this is 0 0.3 repeating. Does anyone know that one? What is it, David? It is. What's a fraction? One-third is that fraction, okay? So you know how one-third, some fractions, if you divide them, you get a repeating decimal. One-third is one of them, okay? So even though this keeps going on forever, it has a pattern. It repeats. So it counts as rational. Square root of 0 0.25 also counts as rational, okay? And we're going to talk about this in a second. But if you take what number times itself is 0 0.25, think about what number times itself is 25. Five. So what number times itself is 0.25? There you go. 0 0.5. That's rational. Okay. An irrational is in this sad lonely bucket over here all by itself. And it's all the numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. They do not terminate, they don't end, and they don't repeat, right? It's not a repeating um, 
a repeating pattern. So not to get confusing here, I know that in this example, I have one zero zero one zero zero one one. There is a pattern, but it's not a repeating pattern. So that doesn't count. Pi is an irrational number. It never ends and it never repeats. Okay. The other thing they will do for irrational numbers, they will do stuff like this. They'll put 5.21783 and then they'll put dot, dot, dot. What does dot, dot, dot mean? It keeps going, right? But can you predict what the next number is going to be? No, no it, you can't. Okay. That makes it irrational. Okay. And then the real numbers is the bucket that encompasses all of them. Now, here's what we're going to do. A couple of things with this. So next page, we've got a couple of things that I have to show you. Square, and there's a reason they're all in one lesson, okay? And I'm going to use this one. Hold on. Okay. So I copied, oh, shoot. Okay, let's see if I can get this close enough that it's easy to see at least, or we can kind of see it. All right, so I actually just copied this first one because I feel like at this point, it's very easy to understand. So it says, what's the simplified version of this expression? So the square root of 81 is 9. What's the reason why? Because what? Equals 81. Now, the one that's a little more challenging that you might not know is the square root of 9 over 16 is 3 fourths. What are they actually doing here? They're doing what, Malcolm? That's right. They're actually taking the square root of the top, right? The square root of 9 and the square root of 16, right? And so that's how they get 3 fourths. That square root goes with your numerator and your denominator, okay? And so um, there's a little bit of the got it down here. These should be fast and easy problems for us to do, okay? So starting with A, and this one we can yell out, what is the square root of 64? Eight. Eight. What is the square root of 25? Five. Okay, now do not yell this out. What is the square root of 1 over 36? Somebody raise their hand and tell me. Joelle. Malcolm. That's right. So many people forget that the square root of 1, what times itself equals 1? One times one is one, right? So one does have a square root. Okay, who's got D? Square root of 81 over 121. But Ronnie, where's one? Nine over 11, perfect. Okay, so those are some of our, our assignment today. It's fast and easy, like I said. Okay, if you know your multiplication facts, that will be easy for you. Okay, problem two now is estimating a square root. Not all the square roots are going to be perfect square numbers like that, okay? So take a look at this. Lobster eyes are made of tiny square regions, actually, if you zoom in really close. Um, under a microscope, the surface of the eye actually looks like graph paper on a lobster. Um, a scientist measures the area of one of the squares. So this area is going to be 386 is the area. Now, what is the approximate length, side length of the square to the nearest micron? So this is literally asking you what number times itself would give us 386. Now, this is where we might need to write ourselves some extra notes because you guys only really memorize until 12 times 12, right? 15. 15, you got? So, so for those of you that don't have it memorized beyond 12, um, let's write this in. And I actually copied this, so I'm going to put it up here. Let's see if I can get it on screen at the same time. Okay? So in your bottom corner, wherever you want to start, okay, writing, this is your perfect squares through 20. So in on your notes, in the bottom corner, you should have enough Space to have this written in, right? Um, so for us, right, a lot of you know to here. 
So you don't ha might not have to write 1 through 12. However, you might not know 13 through 20, right? But those are the most commonly used is 1 through 20. And so let's have them in our notes. Um, if you if you need them, because this is going to be a non calculator portion. So if you don't know them, you're going to need them. Right. Now notice is 386 on this list. No. It is not. This is not copy. This you have to copy down. I have a copy of it. Um, just for class. Right. So that I can bring it out. Yes. Okay. So 386 now is not on the list. So you're right. We have to make an educated guess. Now we can get super close, right? We can, this says to the nearest micron, so to the whole number, but we could actually even get to tenths, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. So what we want to do is we want to look at this list and figure out where does 386 fall in between? What perfect two numbers does that fall in between? Um, go ahead. It falls between 19 and 20, right? Because 19 squared is 361, 20 squared is 400. So if we do this out, right? If 19 squared equals 361, and now I'm doing it on here, and 20 squared equals, oops, 400. Now, not, what is the direct middle of 19 and 20? 19.5, right? So 19.5 is going to be our middle line right here. So what you do is you go, okay, is 386 closer to 361 or is it closer to 400? Okay, so let's think about it. How far away is 386 from 400? How many units, Joe? 14, right? This way it's 14 units away. How far is it from 361? Um, go ahead. 25. So is it, it's closer to 400, isn't it? So when we give an estimate to the nearest whole number, what's the estimate? 20. But we can get even closer, right? Is it right in the middle? No, it's not right in the middle. It lands about right here. So we know to the nearest tenth, it's bigger than 19.5, but less than 20. So it's got to be 19.6, 19.7, 19.8, or 19.9. Do you think it's 19.9? Is it that close? Oh, no. no. What would be a good estimate? 19. Eight. 19. Eight. Seven. 19. what? 19.6 or 7. Yes. So even though this one, our answer is 20 because it says to the nearest micron, right? We can get even closer. It's about 19.6 or 19.7, okay? And that's how we do that. All right, let's, uh, that's kind of an intense one. Did everyone get this? I'm sorry. Okay, great. So I know that um, this is problem three comes next, but what I want to do is I actually want to do problem four first because it kind of goes with this, okay? So while we have this fresh in our brain, let's skip over to problem four, okay? So problem four now, it's using that idea because you don't have a calculator and you won't when you take the PSAT, right? to figure out which one of these numbers is greater, okay? So square, the way you want to do that is you want to know the decimal equivalents, okay? So let's start with square root of 17, okay? So between what two perfect square numbers from these, right, is 17 going to be? Between what two perfect square numbers is 17. Cecilia, so go. Yep, so it's 16 and 25, so we're going to use, oh no, not 3 and 4, 4 and 5, right? Sorry. So 4 and 5, right? 
the square, if I do four squared, I get 16. And if I do five squared, I get 25, right? So now 17 is going to fall in the middle of here, isn't it? Is 17 closer to 16 or 25? 16. Way closer to 16, right? 17 is the next number. So knowing that information, let's work backwards. What is going to be a good estimate for the decimal for the square root of that? Go ahead, Cameron. Go. Yeah, about 4.1. Okay, so we know when I'm talking about the square root of 17, it's about, and this is your about equal to sign. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Squiggly. Is about 4.1. What is the decimal for four and one third? We literally just talked about one third. Yeah, so four and one third is about 4.3 repeating, right? So which one is larger? So the four and one third. So when it says use an inequality, we do this. The square root of 17 is less than four and one third. That's how we do it. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So for the sake of the video, we're going to not do problem five. We'll do um, our assignment, but I do want to do problem three because this is the other part of the lesson where you wrote down all of those definitions. Okay. So um, I'm going to slide this. Whoop, make sure we're on here. Okay, so to which subsets of the real numbers does each number belong? So here's that word again, subsets. Those are the buckets that we wrote down. So 15, what you would do on here is you would look at those buckets. And now I have a bigger version of this. Hopefully I can put this on here so you guys can see it. Okay, right? So what I would do with that is I would look at my notes and go 15, and I start with the top bucket. Would 15 be a natural number? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So natural is our first one, and I'm abbreviating. Now, the buckets are great. What else does it then have to be? It's got to be whole. What else? Integer. What else? Yes. And then the real is all of them, right? So we don't have to include that, but all the subsets are the little buckets. All right, let's do it again. So using your notes, right? And I'll put mine up here so, so we can have them on screen at the same time, hopefully maybe. Switch over, buddy. Right? Negative 1.4583 is going to fall into what bucket first. Now go on the line, think in your head, which one's going to fall into first? Speciosa, what do you think? It is not in the integers because integers have to be whole numbers and that's a decimal, right? Melko. Rational is correct. Now, why does this be, why is this rational not irrational though? Because irrational has decimals as well. David, go ahead. Because it ends, and at the end, it divides. It ends, right? It, it ends, and you could make that into a fraction. If the decimal ends, it's automatically rational, okay? If it doesn't end, it's irrational. Okay, now this is where our square roots come into play. So square root of 57, is that in our list? It's not perfect, is it? So is what is the subset that this one's going to fit into then carla go ahead what one uh no i want these buckets what bucket does it fit into so sorry what is the subset that it what it is not rational and here's why i know it's going to be a decimal we estimated it right but if you were to type that into a calculator you would get that decimal going all the way to the end of the calculator Every one of these that is not perfect is irrational. If it's not perfect, 
It is irrational. The only ones that are rational are like square root of 64, square root of 25, square root of 36, those perfect ones. Okay, that's it. There's are questions on the, on the lesson. Okay, so what we're going to do on here is our assignment today is 1-3 practice, but we're only going to do the even numbers through 34, okay? And so some of them are going to be super quick, and some of them, and not many will be super long. 